That was very good. Who was new, that? New single from the Coral. I like that. May a lot. the 9th. I know the album's due out any day. I'm looking forward to the album. Mm. We have with us the lovely, charming Mr. Julian Clary. He's, he's coming in. Never mind um, the Jesus candle. Yeah. His essence, which your bottle he smells great. Yeah. What are you wearing today, Julian? I um, mean, it's called Truth by, I think it's Calvin Klein. Well, it's very good. And now you'll probably get a free box. That'd be lovely. <laughs> oh, I'm I, very liberal with it. Oh, well, uh, well, we noticed that. You've got a lot on. <laughs> it, was a, it was a little like opening the door to a Viennese bottle. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> Never having been to one. But if you're going to go to one, Vienna will be the place, wouldn't it? Vienna? I don't know. Yeah. Have you never been to Vienna? I haven't tried it out, no. I went to Vienna once, had a very nice uh, walk at night. I got a bit lost, wandered around, and on the corner it was snowy, quite beautiful. The crisp crunch of snow under my boots. And I walked from corner to corner where there would be people spelling, it's not smelling, people selling beer and sausages. On the corner? Yeah, on the corner of these various big sort of strassers. I imagine it's all fluffy muffs and rococo <laughs> chandeliers That's and it. things. And sausages. Sausages. Oh, I got through about eight sausages on the way home. I'm the same. <laughs> <laughs> Julian Clary is uh, uh, back on the BBC live every Saturday night. Mm. It's a live show, isn't it? At 7.45. Wow. And it started last week, didn't it? Last week. Come and uh, have a go. If you think... If you, well, no, we don't say that. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay so... I said it once, but you can't say the word hard on the BBC. You can't say hard. Come on, go if you think you're tough enough, they've suppose, changed it too. <laughs> but I suppose it's contextualising is the point there. Obviously, if you say it in a certain way and there's a double entendre, that's what they'd be worried about. They're quite nervous of me saying anything untoward well, to you, frighten the horses. There was a few years ago where people said Julian Clary would not be unleashed on live television ever again. And yet know. now we find ourselves not just on live TV, but in the bosom of the Saturday night schedule. Yes, I'm a national treasure. Mm -hmm. um, it's all gone full circle, you see. Isn't that interesting, the way life yes. goes, though? When you're up, you're up. When you're down, you may well get up again. It's a funny old world. You just have to hang around long enough, I think. But that's all it is. We're being rewarded for our perseverance these days. I think so. <laughs> You'll get a nice job one day, Anne. I probably will do, yeah. I know. He's got a it's writing a career to worry about. Leave him alone. <laughs> right? He's yeah, working. my writing career. What are you, what, what are you writing about? I'm writing a novel. What sort of novel? It's a novel about a, a bloke that's a bit like me. OK, well, that's a good start. Cause yeah, you write what I've you written know. two chapters. You do write what you know, but do you really know yourself, Andy? No, not really. No. Has it got a title? It's called Maybe This Time. Oh, God, I'm getting gritty. depressed already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm what? depressed already, it's maybe this time. It's got jokes oh, it's in it. it's a comedy, good luck. I thought it was one of those depressing... Our agent, Julian, has, yeah. has read it, she likes it. Really? Oh, yes. You have the same agent as Julian Clary? I do, yes. Oh, my good lord. Yeah. Oh, oh my giddy Obviously, I'm further down the list. All right, well, Julian, <laughs> we're speaking of writing, and it's a happy coincidence that Julian uh, had his autobiography, or the first part of his autobiography. It's actually a memoir. Now, is it, what's the difference in a memoir and autobiography? Um, I think an autobiography is much more kind of proper and you go through every year of your life and, and I just pick out bits um, that I want so, to talk about. So yours are just kind of like charming moments or revealing moments that you choose to share? Yes, I mean, it's fairly chronological trot through my life. Yeah. The highs and the lows, light and shade, yeah. the ups and downs. Um, but no, I think it's called a memoir, that's what I've been told to call it. Oh, really? Um, so I am a published author, you see, Andy. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So I'm waiting for my signed copy from you. Not didn't you buy one at the book launch? Because you came along, didn't you? No, you didn't, I didn't buy one. one. You didn't I was buy waiting one. for one from you. What do you mean waiting for one? Were you? Well, I want a little, you know, mem you man's know, got to make a living. There, little note in there saying, you know. Well, what the deal I'll be is, in the next one, you buy one and then they sign it for you. That's oh, the deal. That's what I'm see. I should have bought one this morning. Actually, I didn't think. Yeah, right. It's very good read. I really enjoyed reading. it. I'm not sure who I passed my one on to, but I read it and I passed it on to a, perhaps an elderly relative. Because we've got, it's interesting, we, we used to have the same manager, didn't we? That's, that's correct. Who's mentioned in the book. Yeah, a very funny, your mention of, uh, our, our, my manager is a, he's a, he's a, it's really a very hard man to describe. <laughs> no, it isn't. Isn't he? You don't think so? <laughs> no. Imagine, imagine Del Boy to the power of nine. Yeah. Okay, but without the restraint. <laughs> Would that be fair, do you think? Yes, he, he's, he's highly amusing and, <laughs> uh, and tends to get his words mixed up, doesn't yes, he? Yes, he, he does. does. He's done many occasions. He wants to go, he was so quiet, he could hear a mouse drop. And when, I, um, when my Norman Lamont thing happened, he said I'd caused a right Ferrari. <laughs> <laughs> Bless him. Well, Mark Lamar, I believe, was collecting these sayings. You intend to bring them out once, yeah. in, including such classes as, come on, let's get this boat out of the station. <laughs> I'm like a bull at a china gate, he said to <laughs> and me. And the once. other one was, I've got the Mazda touch. I've got yeah. the Mazda touch. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be listening now, loving yeah. this. We should get him in. <laughs> yeah, he's a guest. Oh, I don't think we dare. Um, but you seem, these days, I, I, you, it's interesting, you're talking about life being somewhat psychical, there being, you know, ups and downs in everyone's life. These days, you do seem to be, you seem to have plateaued out at a nice level, I would have thought. Would that be a fair way of putting it? I think that's a very nice way of putting it. I think that happens. Life does sort of level out as you get older and, and things that are 
upsetting aren't as upsetting <clears throat> maybe yeah and you learn I guess you learn to deal with the little knocks that come your way as well as sort of like you know appreciate the nicer things you do it's funny though I'm um, having this book out I've had some lovely reviews and then the Daily Mail reviews it and they're you, see, you know what they but what are you doing reading that paper I only read it because I'd had a review was in but, um, <laughs> was it someone said you had a nice um, review in the paper was it well they didn't really review the book they reviewed me as a sort of person well, and, and a, found me wanting yeah, of course because <laughs> in their eyes you're a terrible blemish on the backside of mankind I yes <laughs> so my, my um, literary uh, what's he called my editor's given me a t-shirt saying hated by the Daily Mail. Yeah, fair enough. But you know what, I think we could have assumed that of you anyway. <laughs> I don't think you need the t-shirt for that. Uh, let, now, I, I'm never that certain whether you're actually particularly into modern music, Julian. I don't think you are, are you? No, you know I've got strange taste. I mean, I like um, Aretha Franklin and that's, is that kind of modern? Mm. But it's really yodelling and that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, what are you going to try on Well, you? I don't know, I just, because I thought we might play something for you, but mm. we, what, I don't what like you have? I've got the Clash lined up. No, that won't be any good. No, for Julian. Earth, no. Wind and Fire for you? As long as there are guitar solos. <laughs> you like a guitar solo? <laughs> keep, keep flicking through. How about, oh, look here, now here's, a, I, this is by chance, I don't know if these are any good, I bought them because these were one of those obscure, but it's an interesting period in British history, it's just post-punk, no one was quite sure what to do, but everyone wanted to take this kind of like, interesting challenge forward, and there were numbers, and there was a band came out that were generally reviled, as much for their name as anything else, bear in mind this is the early 80s, they called themselves the homosexuals. Really? Yeah, and I believe they weren't themselves homosexuals. They just chose it as a provocative name. However, I've bought this on Amazon, haven't listened to it yet, so I don't know whether I want to inflict it on the <laughs> listeners in case it's absolute rubbish. Can I have a look? Of course you may. I don't think there's anything there you haven't seen already. How about stacks? Some stacks, funks? This is your like. There you go. All right, OK, give you that. Yeah, You're like this. You're, this is safe now for you, Julie. You're going to enjoy this. We've got four, five extra tracks on this. Yeah, yeah, five extra tracks that, you know, I don't even know what the regular ones were like, whether I wanted to listen to them yet, so which, the extra tracks were right. Hold on, hold on, calm down, I calm down. Well, we're going to the news soon. Well, no, but it's fine, OK. Uh, why don't we go to track three? G Knight, Do Me. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> G Knight from Stacks way back in about 72. We have to go to the news. We will chat with Julian Clary some more after this. 88 to 91 FM. This is Radio 2 from the BBC. David Bowie. Of course. God bless you. Where would we be without David Bowie in a world far less rich? Yes. That's a fact. Julian Clary is with us. Uh, Julian, it is lovely to have Julian here, especially because he smells so good. Yes. Because the room was getting a bit foggy with just the two of us <laughs> in here. We're both. Did you have a shower this morning? I did indeed. I, I did. didn't, you see, and that's uh, probably the problem. That's our downfall. Although I did put a bit of powder on to dry up some of the sweat. <laughs> oh, dear, oh dear. Why didn't you have a shower? I can't be bothered to have a shower every day. There's no need. Ugh. Look, yeah. you're doing yourself no favour showering every day. You're washing off all the friendly bacteria, but then you have to drink those high, overpriced drinks to put back in your gut. I moisturise, though. You see, well, obviously you do, because <laughs> you're one of those people the Daily Mail don't like. So you would, you spend a bit of time doing yourself up. Can't you, speak to have moisturised. I must admit, occasionally in the hot weather, I do find myself looking around for a bit of moisturising uh, stuff. I have to steal my wife's because I don't have any. I had some once years ago, and I figured it probably went off because I had about three, four years a little tube. Right. Yeah, didn't use enough. Once accidentally put some toothpaste on my face instead. Oh, what a laugh. Because the tube looked similar. <laughs> but you know what? I think he did about the same job. Just spelt a bit mintier. That's how blokey you are. <laughs> that, that's how much of a man I am. <laughs> hey, when's the Gay Pride March, by the way? Do you go on that? Um, I don't go marching. Um, I think it it's is... soon, isn't it? July the 3rd or something well, like that. Why are you looking at me? I don't know. I don't know why I'm looking at you. <laughs> um, uh, it's a Saturday, anyway. Surely we're all proud enough already. We don't really need a march anymore, do we? It's just an excuse to pick up, fellas, isn't it? <laughs> And they blow whistles. Yeah, but we all yeah. know I'm proud, for goodness sake. You don't Shake their fists. No, I think it's more of a, more of a celebration. Good. That's it. I think it might be called Mardi Gras these days. Uh, mm. I see. Well, that would make sense. Shows you how ignorant I am that I've, you know, didn't realise. I'm no authority. Would you go? Um, I, I think I am going this year. I haven't been for a while because you used to go and do a, a show. You know, they have a show on there. Right. And... Uh, you get all these very, very strict instructions. You will arrive one hour before your allotted, <laughs> and you will vacate your dressing room. Yeah. So I just thought I won't go anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Too bossy. I didn't take it well. Where's the fun in that? But this year I will um, pop along, I think. Uh, well, that's, see, this also shows you of being in a happy place because there were a few years. I, I, I'll be honest with you. I don't know you that well, Julian. I know you a little bit, but I thought, oh, you know what? We're going to one day we're going to get open the paper. Said Julian Clary found hanging from a tie in his bedroom. <laughs> oh please. Well, you seemed a little bit depressed. I'll be honest with you. Okay. Well, yes. I was thinking of through, staging an intervention. One goes through phases. That's when we were doing that. It's only TV, but I like it. <laughs> Don't blame me. It's hardly my fault. It's just by Andy here. I was depressed. Oh, it's my fault. Uh, well, it? You did seem depressed. And I'm like, oh, I hope he makes it. I hope he comes out the other side. And you did. And the fact that you're now out there engaging with other human beings obviously is a good sign. It's tricky being a comedian if you're a bit fed up with the world. Yeah. And being on that show. <laughs> 
So it went for four series and it paid the rent, didn't it? Hey, there you go. That alone probably kept, you know... I only had to speak about it twice per show. You did, there yeah. There were so many people on it. Kept the black dog <laughs> at bay. <laughs> um, but you now, you do seem... Uh, this is what I'm, I suppose, edging towards. I, I'm delighted. You do seem happier, and that's a nice thing. Yes, that's a fact. Okay. I think I am. Good. Um, and the show is doing quite well, I believe. It was only the first one last week, but it's it's a quiz with a difference, isn't it? It's sort of an interactive thing. Yeah, it's more fun if you play it interactively. You don't have to, but right. it's multiple choice uh, questions. And uh, you play it on your handset or on the internet. And, you know, the questions are good fun, and then there's room for a little joke. Do you get it, a prize at the end? Well, you win up to £50,000. OK, well, at home? No, you play at home, and the, the top ten teams or couples then play in the studio the next week. Well, so if I wanted to play at home tonight with my wife... Yes. OK. We could maybe win and get on the show next week. You've just told me you're going to watch Celebrity Wrestling instead. No, no, last <laughs> week the kids watched Celebrity Wrestling. I'll be honest with you, it wasn't very good. And you could be on the show next week. Right, because I've got a computer... And it has internet connection. I can get it from the front room, so I could sit in front of the front room. We could play it tonight. I love a quiz. And then the, the, there are various rounds, and then people get knocked out, and the last oh. people left stand to win £50,000. Yeah. Plus, there's the lottery, which is a rollover this week. I think it's something like £9 million. Mm-hmm. So uh, we're expecting a very good yes, turnout. not so much, really, £9 million. When you're hanging out with people like <laughs> Sir Alan Sugar, it doesn't seem like so much. <laughs> hey, OK, so, listen, if I want to do it tonight, can we work out a signal of some sort? so that you can tip me the link for some of the questions. I've had to sign a, a special agreement. I yeah, can't but do never, screw that. that, come on. You, Look, I frankly, I don't want do. you on my show. <laughs> you love me on the show. Just do this. You when, talk it, too much. Okay, <laughs> listen, Julian, when, when it's the correct answer, do, I want to help it. Do this, right, for the <laughs> camera, and I'll know that's, that's the one, OK? I just, don't think I can do that, <laughs> distorting your face. He's gurning at me. I'm not body. gurning. There's no gurning involved. That's merely an eye-based thing. It's a very <laughs> subtle gesture. If you were to do that... I could tell James, hey, look out for that. When he does that, that's the one. Well, every time, 26 times. <laughs> yes. <a> question. <laughs> Would it break your heart? All right, just do it 10 times. <clears throat> and then it gives me a bit of an advantage. Because otherwise I'll get it wrong. I'll scratch my face like that. OK. But right. well, now everyone knows. <laughs> you know, they don't know how I'm going to scratch my face. Well, but as soon as they see you scratch... <laughs> what, are you going to keep scratching your face constantly? <laughs> no, I can't. Like that, and then that, that, and then that one. I'm in a position of great responsibility. I can't be um, no, drawn into this not. seedy world of Ladies corruption. and gentlemen, I'm just pointing out, I was merely testing him on the yes. request of the BBC, and you'll be pleased <laughs> to know Julian has passed that test with flying <laughs> colours. He is you. above reproach. <laughs> uh, let's have another piece of music. What do we got, Andy? It's uh, doves. OK, maybe just cross your eyes a bit. Scratch your nose. I can't cross my eyes. I don't know if I can like that. <laughs> <laughs> the doves. Yes. Doves are a great band. I believe they are from Leicester. I'm not sure about that. No, no, that's where Kasabian come from. All right, they're all very similar. It's a new single called Snowden. They're very good. Uh, Julian Clary is with us, looking very casual, before he heads off to the BBC Television Centre to um, get ready for this week's edition of Come and Have a Go. And then I won't be looking casual at all. You're wearing a suit, presumably? Yeah, I think I am. Right, right. Don't know what colour it is this week. For TV, and I'm going to play along interactively at home with my good lady wife. Uh, I suggest you do the same as well. It's good fun. So you register online. And you play along? You can play a, a number of ways. I'll tell you at the top of the show. It's either by on your handset, on the internet, or on your mobile phone. On the mobile phone as well. I don't like all this phone business with texting and stuff like this. I don't agree with it. Well, but you play on your computer then. Yes, I will do. People with their phones all the time chatting in the street. I don't like it. I used a phone box last week for the first time for many years. And once you get over the initial so shock of the smell... Call, yeah, I went, of course. <laughs> Don't go painting me with that particular <laughs> kind of behaviour. You've changed superhero costume. Well, because I'd lost my mobile, I couldn't find my mobile, and I thought, I wonder if these phone boxes still work. And it worked. Well, there are lots of cards stuck up inside. Loads of cards, so there's something to read while you're in there, which is nice. Lovely. Mm-hmm. And it was, you know, an olfactory revelation when I walked in. The smell was quite uplifting. <laughs> They'll just do away with them soon, won't they, phone boxes? But what a shame that will be, wouldn't it? They'll be collector's items. And the elderly, where will they go to make their calls? They've mm. got mobiles, haven't they? But they shouldn't, really. Because <laughs> they'll get confused and leave them in their bags and stuff. You know, it's like, make life easier again. You're supposed to leave it in your bag. <laughs> this is part of my campaign for when I stand. Do you want to run uh, for Parliament with me next year? Next election, do you? Um, well, I'd like to meet Black Rod. <laughs> That's the kind of <laughs> incisive political comment that yeah. will take us to the very top. When he bangs on the door. Jeremy Paxman interviewing you, and why did you enter politics? I wanted to meet Black Rod. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to cheer Jeremy it's up. Not, it's not Jim will fix it, you know. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> he does look a bit grumpy, doesn't he? 
Yes, what's the matter with him? He's going through a phase like I did. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> yeah, but he doesn't even have his only TV to blame. <laughs> <laughs> He's professionally grumpy, though. He has to be grumpy professionally. People who do serious TV, they have to look a bit stern. Well, he ought to play, uh, play along interactively on Come and Have a Go, and that'll perk him up. The Paxmans versus the Rosses tonight. <laughs> That's the battle you've been waiting for. Um, what, what sort of shows do you get offered? Do you get offered all these kind of reality shows? Oh, yes, I don't, I don't think I'd do any more, because I consider Come Dancing to have been reality. I suppose it was, wasn't it? Yeah, it didn't feel like it, but it was. And that was such fun and such yeah. a sort of high, I don't want to do any more. Yeah. My wife got offered one recently this week, and I got offered an odd show as well, and we're both quite tempted. She was offered a show, uh, well, she's not really tempted, she was offered a show where they wanted a woman to binge drink for a month. <laughs> <laughs> this is, and this is a BBC show. How irresponsible <laughs> that? They said, we want someone to binge drink for a month and report back on how they feel about it. She said, that's a nice offer. Meanwhile, I got off of the show, would I like to travel around with a Belgian TV reporter uh, for a month telling him about England? <laughs> what? So imagine that. She's in a hotel room nursing a hangover. I'm out on the road with Jan de or whatever his name is, going, <laughs> how are you done? Oh, I'm feeling a bit rough this morning. Jan would like to say hello. Hello, Mrs. Ross. <laughs> what kind of hell is that? I think you should do it. You should both do it. <laughs> oh, if she couldn't drink anymore, would that be breaking her contract? Well, then? she doesn't drink much. She said, I don't really drink. They went, even better. You'll feel even worse. <laughs> they were excited at the fact. You can't do that. What if her liver packed up or something? <laughs> what nonsense. It is, but this is what passes for entertainment these days. They're the two things we stand on. Bring back the phone booth, ban the mobile phone. Number two, no more reality television. I see. Would you go on one where they try to fix you up with someone? Because there's one called Celebrity Love Island coming up. Well, I did watch the... I think it's on the same time as your show last night. What's that one where you have to guess who's gay and who's... Oh, yeah. Oh, Channel yeah. 4 thing about a woman who she wins if she f picks a straight man. Uh, hosted by the lovely June uh, Sarpong. Yeah. So it's, it's actually... You're drawn into it. It's actually quite gripping. Yeah, but <laughs> now, can you tell with your gay dark? Can you tell who is and who I was totally confused by the end. I thought they were all gay. And Playing it straight <laughs> is cool. <laughs> well, boy, George would have us believe that that's the truth anyway. <laughs> well, you know, it's a sliding scale. <laughs> that's just George's hopeful optimism. <laughs> but, no, no. Uh, let's... Uh, we should say goodbye to you, really, because you've really, got to go and get working. I was, uh, yes, I was going to say, I really ought to get off to work. <laughs> OK, well, let's remind us again. If you haven't uh, seen a copy of Julian's book, I can genuinely and, and sincerely recommend it. I really enjoyed it. And it was something where... You know, it's quite touching as well. I mean, it's honest, but it's also uh, touching and, and I think you come away liking you even more, which is, I guess, the whole point of writing that kind of... Oh, well, thank you, Jonathan. ...self-inflating piece of work like that. <laughs> Unless you're a Daily Mail reader. Yeah, but don't keep going on. You see, that wounded you, didn't it? Did, actually. Yeah, well, let it go. No, we'll let it go. I won't mention it again. Don't and I'll bring again. you a copy, Andy, next time. Thank night. you. Okay, we'll Sorry you're without. And Mardi Gras the 2nd of July, I've been told. Excellent. You've been told. It's in my ear. <laughs> yeah, in your diary. <laughs> um, and uh, we should get a copy of your book to give away as a prize. Let's get a copy for next week, shall I can, do, yes. I can arrange that. Okay, let's do that. Okay, good luck with the show tonight. I shall be playing along at home, and remember our signal. <laughs> All right? <laughs> Every white question, I want to see a little bit of that going on, and I know the answer. Thank you very much. See you, Julian.